You're listening to Random Fit with hosts Wendy Batts and Ken Miller, winner of a Gold Markham Award for Digital Media. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Random Fit with myself, Wendy Batts, and friend and co-host, uh, Mr. Ken Miller. Ken, how are you today? I'm good. Friend and co-host. I'll take it. Well, you know what? I was just going to say friend, but I mean, you really are my co-host. So there we have it. <laughs> Be official about it. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about today's topic because, um, you know, there are so many people that come to me and ask the question like, hey, I twisted my ankle and do I do rice? Do I do meat? Do I do peace and love? And I'm like, gosh, that's like my life. I love rice. I like meat. And yeah, we should be all about <laughs> peace and love. However, all these acronyms stand for something specific. And at the end of the day, we're going to discuss all of them. And then hopefully you can make the best decision based on your you, your decision, like what the injury was, what your physicians say. And uh, we're at least going to put the put the thoughts in your head. So therefore, you can you can hopefully make the decision that best fits you. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's, you know, for the line of work that we're in, Wendy, when we're working with athletes, um, you know, even those, rec you know, I'll say even though you might be recreational, you're an athlete, right? And there's there's times where if you'll have that pickup game or even for us, Wendy, where we have little ones that are involved with sports, things are inevitable where, you know, it happens, right? Someone's going to get hurt. They get a little bump. They get a bruise. They they didn't turn the right way. And a lot of times it's shocking to a lot of people. They're hoping, you know, for the best case scenario, or it's actually the worst case scenario because you know if you've ever sprained an ankle which i've done many a time um you know that winds up being the big question especially if you have a parent who wasn't athletic so they weren't they weren't involved with athletic in, uh, events let's just say um and then to see their little one like try to round a base and they turn an ankle or something like that and they, they just don't know what to do so first thing that comes up is all right, where's the ice pack, right? Where's, you know, where do where you know, because especially for us here in the US, that's what a lot of us migrate towards. But to talk about rice, meat, peace and love, okay, that gives us a little, you know, some options as far as, okay, well, what's the best thing to do immediately? And what are some of the things to do as a follow up, especially Wendy, because you work with athletes who may be coming from an injured situation and are wondering what what the best recourse is for them to get back to that sport. So that's where I'm really glad for this topic and definitely one I'll be sharing with the parents that I work with. <laughs> well, and and Google can be your best friend and it can also be your enemy because right. the first thing people do is they go to Google and say, what do I do? And when you see all of these different things pop up, yeah. it, it, you get really confused. And once again, it's going to depend on the injury. It's going to depend on the person and it's going to depend on the um, extreme. And so what we're talking about when we're, when we're saying rice first, OK, these are these are things that that people do when an acute injury happens. And all acute injury is, is like right when it happens within within one to two days, what is the best course of action to help? you know, this injury, whatever it may be, get better faster because everyone wants everything to go away. I know me, I want instant gratification. If I put ice on it, I want it to, you know, swelling to go down and want to feel like 100% by the end of the day. And that's not always the case. And so let's start with the first one. When we're talking about rice, rice stands for rest, ice, compression and elevation. And there's some contra not really controversy, but this is kind of old school thinking, if you will. And is that bad? No. But there are some more updated acronyms of things to do and the reasons behind it. First of all, when you're talking about rest, if you have an acute injury, the, you don't want in, in let's say it's an ankle. You're not necessarily going to go out for a run because it hurts. And all of a sudden it swells up like a balloon. So you're going to rest it. They tell you to put ice on it, add some compression and elevation. And what that's supposed to do right away is to take some of the um, swelling out. And then the elevation, when you're elevating that injury, it's supposed to help lift it above the heart, which is going to be good for your lymphatic system to try to get some of that swelling to re you know reduce along with that, that compression. And that's something that still holds true today. However, there are different researchers out there that say, 
ice in the very beginning may not be the best, you know, best course of action and right. or you should move it. And that's when we end up going into meat. Yeah. And, and I'll say with um, with the ice situation, I, I remember there was one time I was um, I was still a strength coach at Cal and we had a softball game between our softball team and this European team that we were playing. So they were here from Europe. They were touring the U.S., had a couple games lined up and we had a friendly and something happened to where, you know, somebody got hurt and they had to sit out and of course they they put a little ice pack on it and and you know they were just watching the game and the strength coach who was also their athletic trainer and their physio <laughs> who traveled with the team because they had to have that one person who can take care of situations like that we were talking you know on the bleachers and he one of the things he says you know think about you you guys in the u.s you you, you go to the ice too quickly, you know, you go straight up ice and, um, and then he goes and, and basically tells me, you know, in Europe, you know, or what their practice is, is they don't get ice in there because you put ice in there, you, you're not getting that blood flow like you want, you mentioned Wendy. So you're actually preventing the blood flow to come in to help, you know, take care of that injury because the body wants to heal, right? Um, but when you put ice on there immediately or frequently thereafter, you're not allowing that blood flow to come in and therefore you're inhibiting the healing process. So it had to be like 13, 14 years ago um, where we had that conversation. I thought, you know, it, initially you're just like, man, who is this guy? But then, as, I mean, when you think about the logic, you're like, Okay, well, that makes sense, you know, after, you know, had a while to process it. But then, of course, now that we're talking about rice, meat, peace and love, the things that you do after an acute injury or thereafter, you know, you know, he had a great point. And, you know, I'm not, you know, when my when my kid has his situations where, you know, he might have turned his ankle or something. It's like, okay, well, let's, you know, let's kind of let's sit this one out give it a rest, don't put any weight on it. And then we'll see, then we'll see what happens. But, you know, for the most part, you know, fr from our perspective now that we know what's actually happening when you're incorporating rice, um, you know, you do have options because there's many a time on the side of a basketball court, there's somebody sitting there on the bench, one leg is up <laughs> and they've got that ice pack sitting on the ankle and they're just telling everybody, you know, cheering everybody on or making their commentary on the game. So yeah, there's, and I've, I mean, that's one reason why I don't play basketball, right? <laughs> inevitably. And that's why I wrestled because <laughs> inevitably when it came to running that little stop, turn, pivot, boom, that's, you know, it was not just one ankle, but both, but, you know, there's a model out there that yeah. we could put you through that would help <laughs> you with that. Um, <laughs> and, well, and you this know, was a long time ago, Wendy. When you're thinking about it, like to your point, Ken, you know, you do have an inflammatory response. So right away, if you start to see swelling, you know, back in the day, they were saying for two to three hours, I sit on and off for 20 or 15 to 20 minutes, take break and then repeat for that time. And when you're looking and diving deeper, deeper into the re research, that's not necessarily wrong. And again, it depends on your form of training. But the reason why some people are also saying be careful with that is because what they're trying to do is reduce the swelling, right? So you're trying to constrict those um, that area. And if you've got soft tissue structures such as ligaments, tendons, and cartilage, they don't get a lot of blood supply to begin with. So when you're reducing that, that type of, of response, you can delay yourself in the healing. And that's the thought process of why people are saying, be careful with ice. Now, I'm also going to say, be careful with ice. And it depends on what type of sprain or injury that you're, that you do have. But some other people believe that, you know what, if you do ice from the very start, that it's okay for the first day. But then after that, we should go into our next one, which is called meat. And so when we think about meat, the first one is going to, and I'll go over the M and then can I'll give you the A or E and A T yeah. if you want. But <laughs> this is something that I, I really, really believe in as well is movement. And so when you're, when you've got, you know, movement 
as your M. When you have an injury, you're not going to go through full available range of motion. But as you have that inflammatory response, if you start moving things around, it's also going to help flush some of that um, some of that injury out because the movement is medicine. We've we've seen that. We've talked about that. And so when you're doing that, it's also going to help pro, you know, help the healing process, because if you start to restrict and immobilize something, right. you're decreasing movement in that joint, which can also increase swelling. And so you've got different thought processes and different ways to think about something. But instead of rest first, they're saying do light movements with pain free within a certain range of motion. Yes. And on this episode of Random Fit, we're talking about rice, meat, peace and love. And we're on the meaty part <laughs> of this with both Wendy, Wendy Batts and me, Ken Miller. Um, so, yeah, movement is, yeah, it's imperative because like you said, Wendy, I mean, you, you want to encourage blood flow. And if it's if it's in the case of, you know, like, say, a very, very mobile joint like the ankle or even the shoulder, that is one of the first things you want to uh, incorporate because you don't want that shoulder. Let's say, let's pick on the shoulder for a sec. You don't want that shoulder to also recover in this stagnant and and still position. You because the shoulders is, is is one of the most, if not the most, mobile joint on the body. And you know because there's so many parts related to it. You know you start to immobilize the shoulder. You start you know then the bicep. You know the bicep complex or the tricep complex complex as well as the shoulder girdle overall that starts to get affected but movement just to maintain some coordination get some blood flow and not so that you, you're going to uh you're not going to encourage whatever mm -hmm. poor postures will come with you know like say you have that sh shoulder sling and that's that's you know depending and i've worked with different physical therapists doctors some some still want to just keep that thing pinned and some are just saying is you know whatever pain free range of motion you can do within this degree and this degree let's get that movement um going as fast as possible to where i wendy i don't know if you've ever had client with like uh hip replacement or something along those lines and sometimes these guys they're, they're moving like immediately mm -hmm. right they because they want you to weight bear they want you to get some blood flow to that area because of the things that you talked about with tendons and ligaments that that aren't vascular but you need to get blood flow to that area as soon as possible well i think you bring up two good points um especially on the movement part if we are talking like you you had mentioned in the beginning about shoulders those of those of you guys that have injured your your shoulder, if you have immobilized it, you might hear people sometimes talk about frozen shoulder. And and what ends up happening is, is when there's trauma done and you don't move it and you don't start working through it, then sometimes it, everything gets adhesed. And then all of a sudden that particular joint locks down. It protects itself and trying to then on a rehab side, get full available range of motion, like you said, in a, in a joint that's supposed to be really mobile because it is a ball and socket and it moves in so many different positions. You know, that that is when that happens. Now, when you do see people that are, you know, in a sling, you have to ask, well, was it a broken bone? If someone broke their collarbone, they may want to immobilize that just to help the healing process to reset that bone. So therefore it doesn't, it doesn't heal in a position that's not as straight. So they may try to reset it and then immobilize it while that bone heals. So bones are going to be different and what they have to do in order to, to fix that particular structure. Right. But you don't want to think about that when you're looking at, at, you know, muscles, tendons, ligaments, sprains, strains, the more acute type injuries. And that kind of brings us to the E then, which is exercise. And so when they're saying movement, we're not talking about going and doing heavy lifts, heavy loads at that point. If you've got an acute injury and you can keep things in a pain-free range of motion, but do your daily activities, that is the, the exercises that we're talking about. Can you lift your arm up to eye level? Can you lift it out to the side? Can you bring it behind your back? And if something is tender and hurts, you don't want to go past that threshold because right. at that point too then you can be causing more stress or damage to that particular injury that's trying to heal but movement and exercise are going to be extremely important because it increases the blood flow to that particular injury and when you've got increased blood flow it's more fresh blood and it's going to help 
you know, take some of the damaged tissue, like flush it out of your system. Again, while that lymphatic system is so important in our body to try to get the swelling out to bring, you know, oxygenated blood to the site while it's in the healing process. Yeah. And again, to pick on the shoulder, which the shoulder is very easy to pick on. <laughs> so from, <laughs> from that, yeah, you know, because then you start to look at those those stabilizers, uh, you know, in, in the case of the shoulder, it's your rotator cuffs. And then you you also have a hip cuff, right? You have those deep, uh, those deep muscles that are responsible for dynamic stabilization. So what you said, Wendy, there with the light loads, again, just to kind of add on to that, you know, longer time under tension as your endurance picks up. Um, but absolutely pain-free range of motion because if you try to tough through it, your body is only going to try and figure out ways and strategies to move without pain. So then that's what we would call in the industry, you know, compensation. So again, you know, whatever you can do, pain-free range of motion without compensation for exercise, that's that's basically going to be your parameters. But you also mentioned pain. So as, as we talk about uh, the A in meat, you know, analgesics, those things that are going to help with pain relief, because, you know, sometimes when it comes to pain and injury, um, you know, you are sometimes in situations where, you know, it's going to affect what you have to do. So if you sit behind a, a desk and, you know, sitting, you know, sitting might aggravate the situation or even it might affect your sleep. And we all know the good things that happen with sleep. So, you know, we, we got to get your rest, got to get your sleep and, and you have your daily, you know, your, your things that you have to do on a day to day that, you know, your, your job doesn't care whether you're in, you're in pain or not. Right. So, you know, if you can get through the day with the least amount of pain and discomfort, again, that's the miracle of modern medicine, right? That's why we have some of these things so that, you know, you can get your sleep and you can do what you absolutely have to do without being an absolute discomfort. Yeah. And there are a lot of, you know, topical creams that people use that can kind of help, you know, relieve some of the stress uh, to that area that, that makes you feel better. You know, I want to say, be careful with some of the prescription drugs out there because sometimes that can, you know, while it makes you feel better, it can actually inhibit the healing process. And so people ask about Tylenol and, you know, aspirin or, you know, different uh, things that they can take. And at that point, you know, I'm not their physician. So I'm going to say, you're going to have to kind of talk to your doctor about that. But if you do take some ibuprofen, it makes you feel better. That's not necessarily what we're talking about here. It's those real hard, you know, hardcore drugs that are going to be like muscle relaxers and, and everything. And you just have to see if that's the right, you know, course of action. I can't tell you if it is. However, I know that some of the topicals that are out there, that's more natural. Uh, there are also, you know, nutrition, what you're eating and different types of supplementation can help with that as well. So when you're looking into what can I put on it to make it feel better, those are those are pretty much my go to's. I don't know if you yep. say anything different, um, but uh, yep, there's a lot of stuff out there on the market for got pain. Try this. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it, if I'm talking to my clients or, you know, about a client's kid, uh, or the kid and I have to talk to their parents, there's always that conversation, you know, if, if you um, look at pain and injury, you know, how long do you have to have it? You know, <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't be something that you take for an extended period of time. So, you know, those are the considerations for taking those, those things that are there to address pain. So just watch how long you take, because it could, you know, over a longer period of time, start to do some damage to, you know, your liver and things like that. So just watch that. <laughs> yeah. And then we get to the T. So when we're talking about T, we're talking about treatment and treatment. I, I think when we think of treatment, we think of, you know, going as hard as you can. Again, when we're talking about acute injuries, these are things that are happening from the very start. So, you know, movement, doing some exercise, thinking about some different topicals, but then the treatment side, it can be on a broad spectrum of, of treatment. I am a big fan of contrast soaks. I don't know if you are, Ken, but that's my, my yep. go-to when somebody has a, a particular injury. And what that means is they go and they'll do something, you know, with, with hot water and cold water. So whether it's, you know, the, the cold, for, you know, however long they can stand, <laughs> you know, 
it depends. Maybe it's five minutes, maybe it's less. It depends on how cold it really is. And then they immediately go into a hot tub and they'll sit in there for the same amount of time. And then they go back and forth. Some people go in longer, some people shorter. It depends on what the injury is and where. And, and because again, if you have to soak your entire body, your core temperature is going to drop down. But if it's just your ankle, it's a totally different situation. If you're just putting your legs into these different soaks. So thinking about where the injury is, but that contrast helps with inflammation. It also helps you because while you're in that movement or that water, you can start to apply some different movements. If it's your ankle, for example, you can put yourself in cold water, try to go through the alphabet yeah. with big letters first, and then immediately go into, you know, movement too. So when we say exercise and movement, it's kind of the same thing. Then do all lowercase through the alphabet as long as it's pain free and then do the same thing when you're in the hot tub and going back and forth. One thing that I saw with the research that we did is I think the steroid injections, what, from what I, what I've read should be avoided. Those are more for chronic injuries that people cannot get themselves out of. And something that the doctors like it's either surgery or let's try this next. So that's a last case scenario, not something that you should do for an acute injury whatsoever. Yeah, I've had clients that they've sought consultation and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Or when it does work, it's for, you know, a limited amount of time. So they, they might feel some reprieve. But the big thing about that is sometimes the, with the treatment plan, you feel you feel good, you feel great. And the biggest mistake that I see people doing is that they they go for it, Right but they're still recovering. They're still getting over that, that situation that, that got them into this, have this problem to begin with. So take your time in coming back. And this is where we start to talk about return to play that, wow. that gradual process in returning back to full, full practice, full play, full competition. So just because the pain starts to resolve, pain starts to dissipate just still remember you're still in that treatment process you're still on your way back so just because something's working something successful you still have to go through that that recovery process but that's what that's where this the t um in meat for treatment just because the pain is gone doesn't mean that you're ready to go back yes very true. And there yes. should be corrective exercises that are then taken to the point of once you're able to get better movement, we want to increase range of motion back into that joint in order for the execution. Like you said, before we do the return to play. Yeah. But when we were going through, I've heard of rice and meat. One of the ones that I had not really researched or spent a lot of time on was peace and love and peace and love go together. Yeah in all forms of life. And so this is what research is telling us to do now. And uh, so when we're going through today, random fit talking about rice, meat, peace and love with Wendy Batts and Ken Miller, we're really trying to get you guys to think what is the best approach for you? Acute injury happens, meaning you twist an ankle, sprain an ankle, whatever it is, or something happened in your shoulder, you start to see swelling, there's some pain, it's an immediate thing that happens. What's the best course of action? Once Again, I strongly suggest asking your doctor, your physician, your trainer that may be certified and can look into it a little bit deeper. However, there is peace and love. So peace, when we're talking about that, we're talking about protect, number one, elevate, avoid anti-inflammatories, compress and educate. So this is something that happens immediately. As soon as it yeah. happens, they're saying, number one, to protect it. So you want to unload or restrict the movement that you're doing, which is different from what meat is saying, because they're saying to move it. But this is just to avoid it and restrict it for one to three days. Now, I personally like to see movement happen, especially in some of these extra mobile joints, yep. because I do believe that movement can help the quality of that. However, if it's super inflamed and, and, and causes pain, we wouldn't be doing that anyway. But they're saying... After that happens for one to three days, number one, protect it. Number two, then again, elevate it. And there's a lot about elevation that I, I believe because of the lymphatic system, elevating something above the heart is important. And there's there's a lot of research to show the importance of that as well. Yeah. And that 
a lot of overlapping concept between rice and peace, right? So the anti-inflammatories, um, <clears throat> elevation, the compression, okay, would be the, um, again, compression that matches. Uh, and then and then the education. So what's happening, especially with younger kids, their first time, and then just understanding the process. So again, a lot of overlap, but, you know, the, the protection is the part that's been added in, you know, whoever, you know, the, the people that actually go into making these processes, as I was telling our producer earlier <laughs> before recording, like a lot of these guys in the medical field, they love acronyms. And it's like, huh, let's say I got an A, I have an E, I have two E's. Uh, let's, what, how can we make that into work? So the, <laughs> so the protect, you know, just get them, get them off their feet. Right. So that, that, that goes hand in hand with elevation you're not going to be putting that joint through any range of motion you know while they're loaded so you got to you got to take them off so that's you know as, as far as peace goes again a lot of overlap but you know a couple additional concepts to go with that so you will have peace first for the first few days peace, and then it's telling you to go into love so you're focusing on the on the peace in the very beginning when we're talking about love the first thing it is is about load you know, thinking about an active approach to loading and, and the movement and exercise at this point. So one to three days, they're telling you to do peace. Then after that, add load very carefully when you're doing it, you're trying to repair and remodel the tissues, trying to get optimal and, and ideal ranges of motion and movement patterning. That is something that we teach at NASM all the time anyway. So I'm a huge fan of load uh, within reason. And the O would be optimism. I think it's important to really think about your brain and then what it's done to the player or your kid or your family, whatever, whatever it was that whatever the acute injury is. But, you know, making sure, too, that that you're going through doing the proper rehab and any barriers that that has happened, if it, it's a fear factor. Sometimes people will sprain their ankle going up to do a layup and they don't land correctly. Mm -hmm. It was non-contact. Now they're scared to go back and be full force and playing a sport that they're good at and they love because they don't want to have that happen again. But I think it's important to really spend some time. And that's where load comes in doing balance exercises. If it's an if it's an ankle sprain, we've seen a ton of research saying that if you do, you know, that if you don't do proper balance work and you realign the tissue and get the joint working and then retraining the brain and the body to move optimally, those can reoccur very frequently. But just by performing balance exercises within your program, you can help, re you know, um, realign everything, get better movement and then reduce the chances of that happening because you've strengthened that joint and the muscles that are not the joint, but the muscles that surround the joint right. while yeah. you're getting improved range of motion within that process. Yeah. And this is this is one way to really get progressions, um, teach about progressions, because it is about building that confidence. Right. They have to earn their right to go to that next level. So if you're bringing up balance exercises, Wendy, so a progression there is can you uh, can you weight bear? Can you stand with good structural integrity with, you know, the toes, the knees, the hip in line, good level hips, good level shoulders. And they can't can't can they do that pain free and they can they do that without dropping, wiggling, you know, the knee collapsing in that foot pronating. Can they do that? And then once they earn that, then they can start to move through the ankle and the hip. And then can they actually jump and land? Now, all the things that they're going to do with sports. So if they've earned their right to that next step, one, you're going to ensure that they're going to be as safe as possible through your training program. But two, they are they're gaining confidence with every progression that you do. So when you talk about optimism and again, jumping down to the E and love, that's your exercise. So both of those go hand in hand. Yes. And the V is vascularization. So when we're talking about cardiovascular health, the important to then boost your energy, getting yourself back, doing some cardiovascular things, showing your body that, you know, it, it can be, it can be good for the brain, but it's also good for a motivation booster to show that you can, it increases blood flow to that injury. Yep. And then with that, along with the exercise and improving range of motion, you should get yourself back to whatever it was that you're doing. Now, unfortunately, we have to keep in mind that with an acute injury, it is an injury and injuries take time to heal. So you don't want to do things too quickly. And it is important to listen to your body. And um, I think I think what we're trying to say is there's no 
definite answer to what is the right approach. Because it, when you're looking at what I've read, it keeps coming back to, well, ice is actually okay. Ice is actually really good yeah. from the very beginning. Yeah. And then, it, and then you get the, well, movement is better. You're going to be the determining factor or your son or your daughter. But I think it's very important to, in your mind, understand that you don't want to do things too fast. If you don't do a proper healing before you get into your return to play and something's not healed correctly, it can lead to further issues that could be more uh, structurally damaging. So you want to be careful in that approach as well. But but hopefully this helps clear up some of the uh, confusion on what a, are all of these acronyms and is rice right. better than meat? Is meat better than love and peace? And I think at the end of the day, you and I both said, well, they're all correct. You just need to choose one that works best for you yeah. and go with it. And if there's any doubt, go to your allied health medical professional, yes. right? Or your local at certified athletic trainer uh, for more information on what's going to be right for you. Um, so this was this was a big topic, Wendy. But I think that if you're liking, following, sharing <laughs> uh, this with whoever it is that you're working with from an athletic standpoint, those in, that you're in medical care with, find out, you know, have that discussion and see what's going to be best for you, especially if you have a history of injury or somebody that's really close to you, you know, can find themselves in these situations. So great topic, Wendy. I think probably something that we should have done sooner considering <laughs> the amount of times that we get this question. So uh, for those of you that have sat through this episode of Random Fit uh, with both Wendy Bass and I, Ken Miller, talking about rice, peace and love. Oh, sorry, meat. Uh, thank you so much. Don't forget, uh, you the, like meat. You, don't forget the meat. Uh, so um, like, follow, share, subscribe. Let us know if there's anything you want us to talk about here on Random Fit. But everybody, until next time, take care and be well.